What's going on YouTube? It's USFJ Rain checking in with Rainy Photos. And right now I'm actually gonna show you guys a, a frequency separation tutorial that without actually having to go into Photoshop. Um, I kind of came up with this by accident. It's just it's kind of like a method I've been using for years. It just, it just kind of really started to work out for me lately. Um, so let's get right into it. I'm in Lightroom 5. And um, yeah, so here's the original photo. As you can see, it's pretty crisp. Everything looks sharp, and we're going to turn it into this. And, you know, once you see, once you zoom in, like you can still see that the skin is actually really, really smooth. Um, yeah, and all like I said, all this was done in Lightroom without having to go into Photoshop. So um, before we get started, there's a couple things. The very first thing you're going to need is an amazing makeup artist. Um, <laughs> I cannot stress that enough. You're just going to need an amazing makeup artist. Um, I always use the same one for all my shoots. Her name is I am Brandy V. Follow her on Instagram and um, Snapchat and everything else. She's absolutely amazing. The second thing you're going to need is a program called Imagonic Portraiture. Um, you will see it in a minute uh, once you start getting into the tutorial. But uh, that is the software that you will need in order to pull off this effect without having to go into Photoshop. So let's get right into it. Um, here, like I said, here's the original photo. I shot with the Canon 5D Mark II with the 50 millimeter. I'm lean. So, um, very first thing I always do, I always start. I start off with my crop. Bring this up a little bit. Um, I knew I wanted it to be a headshot from the beginning. I just kind of shot it wide because I knew like the 5D Mark II, the megapixel count on that is actually pretty high. So I knew I was still going to get a sharp, clear photo. You know, how, no matter how you know far I decide to zoom that in. All right. After that, I come over here. Um, I basically do the same thing for all my settings. I adjust the blacks, adjust the shadows a little bit. Um, I might play with the vibrance a little bit to see the color. Probably not gonna mess with that too much yet. Adjust the highlights a little bit. As you can see, once you play with the highlights, it already kind of you know brightens up and smooths the skin out a little bit. And then I come down here to the luminance here we go there we go and orange is the skin tone and something like that but i'm not gonna get into that yet um just gonna get into it so as you can see like i said brandy was an amazing makeup artist but you know we do have a few things to uh fix a lot of which happens to be you know some of the skin you know the zits on the skin so just like in photoshop if you were doing frequency separation in there you know you, of course you're going to separate um you're pretty much photos you know you separate the layers whatever first but i'm gonna actually i'm gonna save you time all you really need to do is just from here just go ahead and start moving zit so just like photoshop you're gonna pick a point click click the zit then pick a point where you don't that doesn't have the zits and then you know just kind of clean it up this probably is the longest part of the process i know when i originally did it it took me about 15 minutes Let's see if i can do it a little faster today but yeah, this is probably the longest part. You know, when I'm doing frequency separation in Photoshop, it probably takes me a good 45 minutes to edit just one image. And then it's like, the way I shoot, yeah, the way I shoot is like, I shoot a lot of them. And then it's like, I like to give back a lot of the portraits, uh, a lot of the pics that I shoot. This is, I just don't have that kind of time to doggone do every single one of those photos like that, so. This method definitely saves on um, some time. Even with this method, I still don't do a lot of them. But you know, it just depending on who the client is, how big, how big it is, and where exactly is it going. If it's just going on Instagram, I'm, I probably won't go as in depth like I am now. But you know, for tutorial purposes and for my own personal website and everything, I'm gonna probably put in a little detail with it. So as you can see, all I'm doing is just you know cleaning up some of those blemishes and everything. As you can see, um, the right side of her face is already getting clear over here. Already good and good. But, you know, the makeup artists can only do so much. And that's what we get paid for, to fix everything else. I'm actually probably gonna leave that right there, kinda like that. Um, all right, so, two sides of a fail. Oh, I missed a spot over here. one up two all 
while I'm doing this, you know, if you have any questions about the uh, actual studio, that paper back there is actually paper that I got from Joanne's Fabrics. I think it's called Fade, Fadeless Paper, Fadeless Paper, something like that. Um, it's regular, like seven, eight dollars, but Joanne always had coupons online, and I found the sixty percent off coupon, so I wound up getting that paper for three dollars. Um, it's like three by six, I think. So you know, it, as long as they stay in that area, I mean, you pretty much you can get a full body shot out of. You just got to do some cropping a little bit later, or you know, you just buy two of them, put them up side by side, and I'm shooting with just a basic, um, a basic stroll with a with the, um, I guess a regular size softbox on it. Like it wasn't, it's not too big. Um, most of my photos, I do like to shoot a lot of portraits. Um, I don't really do too many full body shots, but I do it depending on, you know, again, who the client is. And if we're doing something with outfits where they need the full body shots, then I mean, of course I would do it then. But I prefer hair shots and a lot of close ups and portraits like that. I like to really see the expression on the face and I love to show off, you know, my camera megapixels like, I spent this much money on a camera, you might as well show it all right. And you know, our studio is fairly, it's a, actually, you know, it's enough space to do full bodies if like, if you just want to do that. But like I said, I just like detail. And for, for me personally, the best details is when I'm shooting up close and stuff like that, so. I'm just about wrapping up. Got a few more little spots. You know, I don't want to do it too, too much because I don't want to make it look extra fake but you know you can make it look good and magazine quality if you know if you choose to go that route just about done i see a few more areas up here that i want to go with other thing i like about lightroom too is you know you can just kind of draw over it i know you can do it at photoshop too but it just i like me personally i like doing everything in one program like i hate starting something that i gotta export it then you know do it over there and then kind of bring it back i'm not a fan of doing that it takes a little bit longer um you know just extra couple of minutes but you know like i said i just like to do everything in the same software it's easier it's easier for me mentally you know to just kind of keep up with everything that's going on all right i think that's good enough for now let me zoom out make sure i didn't miss any spots look pretty good right there all right so that was basically the hard part now we get into the frequency separation um it's honestly so easy um what you do is right click go edit in and then image what is it imagenomic portraiture or imagenomic portraiture however you want to say it but this is actually the software in which you you know get into the actual frequency separation and it's so quick like what normally takes 45 minutes is actually going to take two clicks it is very simple. So once you click that, you see on the top left it says preparing file for uh, editing. It's actually loading up the software at the same time. Um, while we wait for it to load up, it's actually an inexpensive software. Um, I'm not sure how much it costs because I haven't you like I haven't actually I didn't have to pay for it. Um, there are methods in which you can get it for free, but you know you did not hear that from me. Um, so back to it. So basically, all you got to do is come over here right here. You see you have two little eyedropper tools, just like in Photoshop. What I like to do is I pick the one with the um, with the plus sign on it. And I see, you see both images pop up. Um, they actually have presets and everything laid out for you. I kind of like picking the medium. You know, it's not too much, not too little. You know, it's enough to where it looks good, but not like overdone. And really all you do is you just click the part of the face where you want to get smoothed out. As you can see, as you hover over it, you know, if you click right here, you, know, you can see on the right side that, hey, it's showing you what's gonna get smooth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually pick a highlighted area like that, click it one time. It's supposed to give you a little preview over there, but you know, sometimes you can see it, sometimes you can't, you just hit okay. And then, you know, you just kind of wait for that to load up. Sometimes it takes a minute. You know, you may not can't tell the difference right away. Sometimes you have to toggle through it a couple times to really, really see the effect kick in. And there it is, it has kicked in. Now, as you can see, zoomed in her face is way more clear it's just is that same frequency separation look that you can get in uh -oh, that you can get in photoshop right here in lightroom um once it's cleaned up you can kind of go back and see some of the things that you probably missed you know 
some of the areas that you probably missed. You can go back in, fine tune, clean up a little bit, smooth out just a little bit more. But as you can see, it is very, very detailed. You can still see um, her pores and everything. You can still see certain areas that you probably missing. Like it's very, very sharp. So rather than spend like a good 45 minutes in Photoshop, you really just did it in just a few seconds and literally two clicks. That's all it took. Come in here, clean that part up a little bit more. So as you can see, you know, we're getting that high fashion look. Um, like I said, I just use one strobe. As you can see, the catch light in the eye was really just one light just blinking up on her. And then, you know, pretty much that's the basic part of it. But at this point, this is where I kind of go in and fine tune and, you know, kind of put my own method on it. Um, so what I like to do is I take the vibrance down just a little bit, you know, just kind of give it that, give it that high fashion look just a little bit more. Um, I'll probably adjust the contrast a little bit, not too much though. Actually, I'm gonna take that back down to zero. I don't like what it did. Uh, I might adjust the highlight just a little bit more. Bring it in, make sure she's not too washed out. I don't like that. I'm gonna actually bring this vibrance up a tad bit more. There we go, I like that look a little better. Um, play with the shadows. Cause really at this point, all I'm doing is just playing with stuff just to make sure, you know, just to check out, see if I like that particular look. I don't sharpen it. Oh, but what I do do is I come back into grain and I throw some grain in there. You know, just kind of add some texture back into her face. So as you can see, this is without the grain. This is with the grain. I just throw in a little bit more texture in her face so it doesn't look, you know, too, too fake and too, too polished. And, you know, from there, you need to um, leave it like that. Like I said, here was the original one. I guess there's some more color in there. So you leave it like that. You can crop it in just a little bit more. Actually, I'm going to leave the jacket in for this one. I kind of like that part. And then, you know, basically that's it. I might play with a few more settings just to make sure I got everything. Um, I'm big on blacks. So I love seeing the true colors. And yeah, I might bring a little bit of color back. Yeah, I like that right there. And you know, that's basically it. We'll put it on full screen for you, just so you can see. Very, very clean image, very, very sharp image. Um, there's some areas in our forehead about right here that I could probably go back in and fine tune, but for, tut uh, for tutorial purposes, I'm just going to leave it like that just so you guys can see. But hey, this, this method does work fairly quick. And you know, you can do what you need to do from there. Might go in here and play with the blue in her jacket just a little bit more. You know, show a little bit more of that. Yeah, it's green and the nails bring that out a little bit but you take the now bring it in. so yeah pretty much that is it um if you have any other questions you know of course put it in the comment section like subscribe um check out my website rainyphotos.com and if you have any other methods or any other questions on how to do this feel free to hit me up also be sure to follow me on instagram at usfj rain it's the same for instagram twitter snapchat PlayStation, whatever. Just go ahead and add me on there. You know, let's connect. Until next time.